Fish and seafood, are they good for multiple sclerosis? Well, this is an analysis of the nutrients allowed in five popular MS diets, the Walls Protocol, Swank Diet, Overcoming Multiple Sclerosis, The Best Bet Diet, and Healing MS by Ann Brooke. And I didn't specifically include seafood or fish in this analysis, but all of them allow it. Now, some of the low saturated fat diets limit fatty fish, but more or less, it's allowed and even in encouraged by many of these diets. And this recent study from Sweden, which got a ton of press, suggests that people with MS who eat a lot of fish have a lower risk of disability, specifically a 43% reduced risk of at least moderate disability. We'll take a close look at this study and review the literature in general, and I'll give my personal opinion. There are some theoretical reasons people think fish could be beneficial. One is they're abundant in omega-3 fatty acids. In in terms of organic chemistry, omega-3 fatty acids are fatty acids where the double bond is three carbons from the end of the fatty acid chain, whereas omega-6 fatty acids, the double bond is six carbons from the end of the fatty acid chain. Omega-3 fatty acids have anti-inflammatory properties and are building blocks for certain key biological molecules. It's believed our ancestors had a ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 consumption of around two two to one or perhaps four to one, but in modern times because of certain types of vegetable oils like corn oil and sunflower oil, it could be as high as 25 to one, and this may be deleterious and increase the risk of certain diseases. In addition, fish are high in the amino acid taurine, which is abundant in the nervous system and has some antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties. Additionally, fish may have beneficial effects on the microbiome, our gas gastrointestinal flora, the bacteria in our gastrointestinal tract, and it's known that changes in the microbiome are associated with risk and prognosis of MS. There are many studies on this topic. This is a case control study from Sweden from 2020, not the main topic of this presentation. They looked at 6,914 people with MS versus 6,590 people without MS, and they found that lower fish consumption was linked to a 20% increase risk of MS, and you can see the confidence interval does not intersect one, so it was slightly statistically significant. Here is the MS Sunshine study. First author, Dr. Annetta Langergould, my former fellowship mentor, also depicted one of the other authors, Professor Emanuela Wabant from University of California, San Francisco. The main purpose of the study was actually to look at ultraviolet radiation and vitamin D, but they looked at other things as well. There were 1,153 people with MS in Southern California, where I am, and they found that eating fish or seafood at least once weekly or eating it once a month, but also supplementing with regular fish oil supplements was associated with a 44% lower risk of MS. And this was highly statistically significant, P equals 0.0002. So this was either or, fish once a week or fish once a month plus fish oil supplements. Let's go down under the Aussie immune study from Australia. This is famous for looking at different autoimmune diseases, including MS. They had 249 people with MS versus 438 controls, and they found that eating more than two servings of fish per week was linked to an 18% lower risk of demyelinating diseases. This is a class of diseases which includes MS, the most common one by far being multiple sclerosis, but they grouped it with other diseases as well. Specifically, they found that tinned, in other words, canned fish consumption, more than two servings per week, was associated with a larger 41% reduced risk. I think this is probably just random chance. I doubt there's something specific about tinning. But those are all cross-sectional studies looking at one point in time. Here's a prospective study looking at who develops MS over time. It's from England, the United Kingdom Biobank, with 500,000 or so subjects. Now, it's a little bit strange because they were aged 40 to 69, the mean age of diagnosis of MS is actually around 30, but people can develop MS.
MS at any age, and 478 of these individuals developed MS during the study. And they found that eating oily fish two or more times per week was linked to a one-third reduced risk of MS. Here you can see the odds ratio towards the left means a lower risk of MS, though there was no additional benefit above one time of consuming fish per week. Here's a meta-analysis from Iran. They combined six different studies to increase statistical power, and it's difficult to do this because the studies can use different criteria, but they found that eating at least one serving of fish per two weeks, not that much, just twice a month, was associated with a 23% reduced risk of MS, p-value of 0.004, highly statistically significant. So these are not huge numbers, but it is a consistent finding that more fish consumption associates with a slightly reduced risk of MS. But what if you already have MS? Is there any benefit in reducing disability? Well, here's a cross-sectional study from Italy where they looked at 424 people with MS, and they found a correlation between higher reported fish consumption and lower disability as measured by EDSS. This is expanded disability status scale, a scale used to measure disability in MS research. But the correlation was modest, an R value of only negative 0.34. Here is the holism study, health outcomes and lifestyle interventions in a sample of people with multiple sclerosis. It's an international study, though the first author, Professor George George Jelinek, depicted here, is based out of Australia. Full disclosure, I do know him and am currently working with his team at the University of Melbourne on a research study on nutrition and multiple sclerosis, but he's not paying me or anything like that. He does recommend seafood consumption. This study looks at a correlation between disability and fish consumption. On the left, you can see the rate of fish consumption less than once per week, one to two times per week, or three or more times per week. For people who had normal or, quote, some disability, in other words, low disability, people who consume fish less than once a week, 49.8% were in this category versus more, 62%, who ate fish three or more times per week. Whereas people who required major support, significant help with walking, for instance, people who ate fish less than once a week, 11.9%, were in this category compared to only 8.5% of those who ate fish three or more times per week. So more fish consumption correlates with less disability. They also looked at omega-3 supplements and they found that flaxseed oil was associated with a 63% lower risk of relapses in the prior 12 months compared to not taking an omega-3 supplement. You can see the hazard ratio of 0.37 and a highly statistical statistically significant p-value of 0.001, hence the overcoming multiple sclerosis diet purported by Professor Jelinek recommends flaxseed oil and not fish oil. Here's a study on primary progressive MS from Iran. PPMS is a form of MS where the first form of disease is a slow insidious progression without a history of relapsing MS, and it is on the average associated with a greater risk of disability. They had 143 people with PPMS versus 400 controls, and higher seafood consumption was associated with a dramatically 79% reduced risk of PPMS. Now, that's quite significant. However, in the same study, dairy was also associated with a dramatically reduced risk of PPMS, and dairy is actually linked to MS in other epidemiologic studies, so take this one with a grain of salt. This study specifically looked at people with MS who require wheelchairs and they found that on average they consume less seafood and plant protein compared to the general population. But keep in mind these studies aren't perfect. They're not randomized trials. Correlation is not causation. There could be some confounders. For example, seafood is expensive. People with MS may have less resources, harder to afford seafood. Also, seafood can be difficult to prepare if you have significant disability. And also there could be some other factors like maybe if you eat more seafood, you eat less beef and chicken, and maybe those things are bad for MS, whereas seafood is neutral, but it kind of makes seafood look good in clinical trials because people who eat more seafood are just eating less beef 
for example, it's not 100% clear. But nonetheless, let's take a close look at the Swedish registry study I mentioned at the start of the video. Full credit to first author Eva Johansson, the first author of this study. They had 2,719 people with MS, though only 1,719 answered the dietary questionnaire, and they had relatively newly diagnosed MS. The participants were recruited at both hospitals and outpatient clinics, and they looked at EDSS, the measure of disability I mentioned earlier, and they had follow-up up to 15 years after diagnosis, and they corrected the outcome for the age at diagnosis, sex, ethnicity, the type of MS, the duration of MS, and the baseline level of disability, along with the use of medications known as disease-modifying therapies, though they said Say that this type of correction did not actually affect the results, it would have shown the same thing without doing these corrections. Here are the baseline characteristics of people in the study. The average age at diagnosis was 38, which is a little bit high. The average age in the United States is 30. 72% were women, 81% were of Nordic origin. The study is happening in Sweden. And 93% had relapsing onset MS. The average disease duration was 2.6, so as I said, they were relatively newly diagnosed, and the average baseline EDSS was 1.8, very low, so they didn't have significant disability for the most part at the beginning of the study, and their average body mass index was 25.1 on the border between normal weight and slightly overweight. They created a metric called the fish intake frequency score, which adds your consumption of lean fish with your consumption of fatty fish. So they asked you whether or not you eat lean fish never or seldom, or one to three times per month, or at least once weekly, and they ask you the same thing about fatty fish. And if you ate both fatty fish and lean fish at least weekly, you would have a score of six, whereas if for both types of fish it was never or seldom, you would have a score of two, whereas if you ate both of them one to three times a month, you would have a score of four, and of course you could also get scores of three and five as shown on this chart. And here are the results. They looked at the correlation between higher fish consumption and risk of worsening of disability during the study. So a higher number on the left-hand column means more fish consumption, and here is the hazard ratio, the likelihood of having progression of disability relative to the lowest score, a score of two. And you can see for people with a score of six, the hazard ratio was 0.66, corresponding with a 34% reduced risk of disability worsening. They also looked at specific disability outcomes. So this is the probability of having at least an EDSS of three or greater. In other words, at least mild to moderate disability. And again, the higher the fish consumption, the lower the chance of getting to at least EDSS of three. So compared to the lowest score, a two, if you got to a score of three, you had a hazard ratio of 0.8 or 20% reduced risk. For a score of four, it was a hazard ratio of 0.78, a 22% risk. For five, a 30% risk. And for six, a 45% reduced risk. They did the same thing for EDSS four or greater, which could be considered at least moderate disability. And if you had a score of six, you had a 43% reduced risk of getting to at least EDSS4 during the study. Finally, they looked at changes in fish consumption. What if you start off not eating a lot of fish, but you increase it after you get diagnosed with MS? Well, they looked at people who had a low score at the beginning, two to three, who increased it to five to six within five years of diagnosis. Compared to people who did not change their fish consumption, this was associated with a 20% reduced risk of disability worsening. You can see the confidence interval goes up to 0.99, so it's just barely statistically significant. There were a small number of people who had a score of two who got all the way up to a score of five or six. It was only 16 people, again, within five years of diagnosis, but they seemed to have a dramatically reduced risk of disability worsening, a hazard ratio of 0.41, corresponding to a 59% reduced risk, and despite the small number, it was statistically significant. 
So in sum, even though I don't consider any particular study to be particularly strong or convincing, I do think the evidence is that there is a very consistent association between lower risk of MS with increased fish consumption and lower disability in people with MS with increased fish consumption. Of course, as I said, there could be some reverse causation. I don't think it's definitive, but I think it would be reasonable to increase fish if you have multiple sclerosis. I'd be interested to know your thoughts. Do you include fish or seafood in your diet? And what are your results? And do you have any other suggestions for future videos?